Tom Nelson and Norman Thompson's had very difficult semifinal matchups. And it wasn't a big surprise to see these two battling for third in this ultra-competitive heavyweight division. During his loss to Barbosa, Thompson sustained an injury, and that showed in his match with Tom Nelson. Make sure you listen. Go! That's what's up, baby. Well, it wasn't the first place money he came to Vegas for, but Tom Nelson did leave with a victory. Devin Larratt just about ready to enter the pit, looking for his second career wall hammer. Marcio Barbosa Neal hoping his arm can simply hold up now. Marcio Barbosa looks in a terrible frame of mind here. Barbosa got into a brutal war with Norman Thompson's. Devin Larratt was praying there for that match to happen and go down like it did. His prayers were answered. Barbosa is beaten up. In the 225 pound left hand division, we need the current WAO left hand champion from Canada. Devin Larratt, the reigning champion of the World Arm Wrestling League, will believe that he is poised to win another title. This is a danger seeker, a risk taker doing dangerous things in more dangerous ways. The kind of man who will go into a shark cage with a toothbrush. His opponent hailing from Brazil, Marcio Barbosa, to the table! is a sport which is at least 50% mental, Ben. And the fact that Barbosa is walking to the table with an ice pack, to me, is clear evidence that he does not mean to compete on this left arm. Injured that left arm in the semi-final as he makes his oh, way to the pit. Right, right over here, Bob. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to be able to pull. Okay. So, All right. Got four him in that you fourth mm -hmm. him down? Okay. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> You're a great champion. Okay. Kevin. Marcio acquired a, a pretty bad injury in his last match. He's not going to be able to continue. He's going to have to forfeit this match to you. You're the winner. Sorry, buddy. Next year. I took your spot. Marcio Barbosa will already have moved on mentally and be focused 100% now on his remaining arrow, the right arm. Oh, yeah. It's never been this easy. <laughs> yeah. That's an easy day. Devin Larratt, the Walt champion, with the hammer to his wife Jody. 20,000 goes with. Here's Renee Herlocker in the pit. Unfortunate circumstances, Marcio. What happened to your arm? I hear a pop like in three different places on my bicep during the match, the last match. So my bicep is not good right now. I can't pull. Can you pull on the other side? I'm going to try my best on the right hand now. Devin. Under these circumstances, do you find as much thrill and do you get as excited over a win like this? No. <laughs> no, of course not. You know, arm wrestling's not always just about the event, it's about the process of getting here. And, you know, I trained hard. It's unfortunate that we didn't get to have our match, but in the future, maybe a one on one, we can take this off where we left it. Well, Devin, you had a great run to get here. It wasn't the way Devin Laird wanted to win the title, but it was a win nonetheless. Devin Laird, 20 grand, a two-time wall champion as the hammer goes to Canada. Against the reigning and defending World Arm Wrestling League champion. But Nelson knows this man inside out. They spent time training together, and he will relish the opportunity. He wrestles on pure emotion, Tom Nelson. Taps into that and uses it. It spreads like a fever throughout his body. And we'll try and harness the strength that it yields. Jody Larratt always cheering her husband on. She is in the pit down there as these two guys set to square. Larratt beat Nelson earlier. Here we go in the semis. Look at Nelson's face. He's absolutely raging inside. Maybe you got to slide your elbow back or something, but you got to come down to him. Thank you. He's freaking out over there, man. He's fine. Lauren, you're loving, Devin. Close your thumb. Do not go over his thumb knuckle. Get this out, Devin. Straight, straight. Close your hands. Bam! What? Oh, star. No way. I didn't even go. I thought you'd call him out. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tracer round fired by the Canadian Special Forces soldier there, straight to the pad. There wasn't even a ready. A little tester from Devin Larratt. So one foul on Devin Larratt, three and you lose the pole. Here we go, best two out of three here in the left-hand semifinal. Watch for the start from Devon Larratt. He will try to finish early. The block attempt! Oh, that is a venomous drive to the side. Frustration on the face of Tom Nelson. Oh, wow. Wow. Ah. Unstoppable side pressure from no limits. Devon Larratt using a combination of elements there to overcome a lethally dangerous opponent here on the left arm. We'll look for the same in the setup for the second round. That height, the length makes this man so elusive. He'll go to the back of the pad and then drive forward there. It's a win. Wow. Final. 10,000 minimum. I love you, Tom Nelson. Marcio. Devon Larratt pulls out Marcio Barbosa, the Brazilian himself. That's a tough match to overcome in a lethally dangerous Norman's Thompson's, but for now, a great and impressive win from the reigning champion. Congratulations, Devin. What was the most difficult part about going up against Tom? Tom Nelson, I got to spend about a month out in California uh, in the last six months, and I consider Tom Nelson to be a close personal friend of mine. He embodies what fighting is, you know? Tom Nelson is all heart, but I was just lucky that while I was out there, I got to learn what made him tick and, yeah. How difficult will it be to defend your title? Marcio Barbosa just cuts through tournaments and I, you know, am normally in the trenches, so I've got to, I've got to bring him down to my level. Hopefully we can get some fatigue going somewhere. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough final. Well, depending on what Marcio does, we'll see you guys in the final. Right. right. Go Normans! Go Normans! To me, he's the best craftsman in arm wrestling, and I, I felt what he did. He started and just made it to where I couldn't open his wrist. So Devin Larratt on to the final. Super heavyweight left-hand competition, hailing from Petaluma, California. I need Eric Rubel to the table! It's fitting that a man featured in the final of the World Arm Wrestling League hails from the birthplace of arm wrestling. Petaluma, California, the home of Eric Rubel. He has an opportunity for greatness and to etch his name into the annals of history by beating one of the greatest super heavyweight arm wrestlers of all time. His opponent, the WAL reigning champion, Travis the Beast Bajan to the table! Travis Bajan carries with him to the arm wrestling table an aura of invincibility. Many people have bought into that aura and he is bought in heavily. Agent believes he is invincible and that armory has served him so well. He believes that he is the greatest left-hand competitor in the history of the sport. He has never lost with that left arm. Here comes the cash. 20,000 large on the table. Eric will fell there against Travis the Beast Bajan. Best two out of three, Neil. Travis Bajan will look to finish this very, very early. Square up. Eric will fell has tremendous leverage, huge hands, long arms, but he lacks the speed of the beast. And Travis can take you out of your power extremely quickly. A lethal start to Travis Bajan! I thought he was stronger than that. Disdain for the power of Eric Wolfell there, displayed by Travis the Beast Bajan. A combination of back pressure and evil speed to the side. Travis Bajan with an incredibly comfortable first round win. That will have really set the nerves jangling on Eric Wolfell. 
Watch, watch. You're about to Eric needs to start up. early. He needs to, to stay try well, and climb up that hand. Close your hands. Go! Go! Travis Bajant saying, and he was way up, and to be fair, total justification in that. Eric Wolfell climbed in the grip. Travis Bajant is a master in the straps, and will relish the opportunity to prove that here. Domination off the start. Oh, Wolfell can see. Travis Bajant talked Eric Wolfell out of competing for $20,000. Such is his aura and dominance in the sport. His wife Casey delighted there and Travis Bajant is all smiles. He is and looking at the numbers from the final, they're pretty similar. So Neil, the question is, was this win about technique or strength? This win was about belief. Eric Wolfell's lack of it here and Travis Bajant's absolute confidence. Off the start, Bajant utilised the strap there to make every weapon in his arsenal readily available and he completely neutralised Eric Wolfell. Here's Bajant with Renee. Congratulations, Travis. How important is your self-confidence to your performance? I think that everyone in here should do anything in their power to be as confident, as happy as possible. So that's what I'm trying to do. Congratulations. Travis the Beast Pageant. His legacy yeah. is enhanced. He is the world arm wrestling champion. Trap. To put the brakes on. Well, you saw there that Barbosa defeated Thompson's in the prelims. There's Marcio's family looking on. Best two out of three here, Neil. Here we go. Marcio will be looking for the speed. That's too fast. One foul, Mr. Barbosa. Foul for Barbosa there. A little bit too aggressive off the start. Looking to capitalize and drag Normans off the pad. Thompson's experienced enough not to resist there. Just allows himself to be floated into the air with the elbow. The strap applied. Marcio will look to utilize that as he drives to the side. But Thompson has the brakes on. Marcio gets the finish, but that will do the confidence of Normans. Thompson's a power of good. Look at that big drive there from Marcio. He gets the finish, but Norman's Thompson shows evidence of his power early. His wrist was compromised, but adjustments in the second start may be able to correct that and cause Marcio some real anguish. I gotta bring you down right here. I expect the strap to be sought after by Marcio. He looked to anchor that strap to the wrist and both men going for a top roll. Very hard to maintain a grip in that situation. They say that the strap never lies and that it favours the power man. Well, both of these men are awesomely strong. Close your hands. Big drive for Marcio. He's in a lovely position in the squeak to the side there. Look at his biceps, may have some damage there, he finishes, but Marcio looks a little concerned, gets the win. No celebration from the Brazilian there. Ice her up. Ice it up. So you hear the conversation there, what happened, Neil? Marcio is so explosive, uses that momentum to drive himself to the side, but in doing so, he rides the elasticity of the joint. And on this occasion, his opponent was so powerful that it was compromised, and I think he may have blown a bicep tendon. That is horrible news for Marcio Barbosa as he heads into the final. No question. Everyone thought it was a tough heavyweight class from 18 to 4, now down to 2 for Barbosa. There's further evidence of that. Robbie Torpy claims said it all. Speed is essential here. So the road to the semifinals for these men best two out of three here winner advancing to the final kneel to wrestle for 20,000 in the wall hammer all right gentlemen set your elbows down square up and give me an open hand so i can set you robbie tolpe up and come up with a massive opportunity ahead of him here travis bajant the dominant reigning champion of the world watch for the speed from the beast Close your hands. One no, foul, no, 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 Mr. No. Topi. 
You did not have to do that. Frank just tried to nervous. gain something on the start there. He knows that he must be away quickly, but as the hands close down, there was the back pressure. Back pressure is a key weapon for Travis Page. And close your hand. Imagine you're Go. holding a 100 kilogram mobile telephone and pulling it to your ear. It's a kind of force that Travis Page applies, and he applies it. Bad man, boy. Very quickly. Bad man. Believes with every fibre of his being that he is that bad. And looking at the evidence right there in front of our eyes, you cannot contest the fact that this is a devastating left-hander. Travis Bajan uses the skeletal linear motion of his opponent to try and weaken them. He allows them to fly force in one direction and then hits in an entirely different direction in a fraction of a second, neutralizing their power. But here, Travis, it's really playing now. That first round was a range finder and he's playing to the crowd, having some fun up there. Really is an engaging character. Goes over to get some love from the little people in the crowd. This is a walking superhero and... Robbie Topi looks like one. Topi's only chance here is to try to stop the match and to find a position where he can utilize all that horsepower. Travis Bajan is a very yeah, difficult right there, opponent Herman. to do that against. Wait till you feel this right here in the stretch. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, Mental no. weaponry employed by Travis and Travis oh. Bajan there. With the pin. Talking, not happy. I'm not one to that was ridiculous. Thank you, mate. Robbie Torpy felt like Travis Bajan jump started there and got to a dominant position a little too early. I beat some of the best guys on the planet to get where I'm at, but uh, this isn't the outcome I was wanting for Travis. And uh, the way it all ended up in the end, I'm not happy with it, but like I said, I'm not one to complain, so it is what it is. I'll come back and get him next time. If I was better, I wouldn't have to worry about it, I guess. Travis, before we get to the win, I think everybody wants to know, what do you really think of yourself? <laughs> As you guys can tell, I'm not usually one to brag, right? But it seems more apparent than ever that I am a super, super bad dude. <laughs> What makes you so unbeatable on the left? Well, I mean, the Lord, of course, or whoever. Someone, someone decided that the strongest arm in the history of mankind would be connected to me in this brain. So um, I'm just a super lucky guy. Plus, my woman's here today, and I ain't trying to... No. I'm not taking no ovens in front of my girl, yo. Well, good luck, Travis, in the finals in a form right when he needed to. He faces Eric Wolfell, who is a dark horse for the title. Arm wrestling is very addictive. Once you're in it and you're doing it, you want more. And you want to train, and it's just something you love. It's in your blood. It is, and we're set now here in the semi-final, Neil. You see what each of these men have done to get here in their path, and on the left side of the score, Bug, we'll keep tabs on the fouls. It's the best two out of three. Here we go, Neil. Wilton Brock needs to try and find the hook, which has served him so well. Eric Wafell knows that, and climbing up on the hand there, watching cover Wilton Brock's thumb. That was to try and prevent Brock from closing the distance and finding the hook. Eric Wafell's key to victory is via top roll. He wants to take away the hand and wrist of Wilton Brock. Brock's arm is so strong, but Wafell has done so. Climbs over that wrist and hand and starts to edge down. Now there's the win for Eric Wafell. Perfectly timed, perfectly executed top roll. And he kept Wilton Brock out of his power there. Brock's arm is so strong, but he had nowhere to pull from. Eric Wafell. Just gaining so much position out of the blocks. We are in the straps, and Eric Wafell knows now the route through Wilton Brock. He climbs high. He makes the top roll again. Busts back. Wilton Brock's hand and wrist, and it's all over. Eric 
Drake will fail with a dominant victory. He took little damage there, and he is a dangerous opponent for anyone on this left arm. Wilton Brock have had a fantastic day here in Vegas, but just unable to find that signature hook against this powerful Californian. Who is 23 years older than the man he just defeated, a big victory for Eric Waffel, who has a little time to think about his opponent coming up in the final. He'll face either Travis Bajan or Robbie Topi. That semifinal comes your way next. Sims now, we pick up action between Robbie Topi and Christian Vinny. Two genuine powerhouses, and Vinny has started earlier than Robbie Topi. A stop the match, and we are in a war. Topi trying to top roll the wrist of Christian Vinny. Vinny driving to the side. An absolute warrior, Christian Vinny, with the battle scars to prove it. But Robbie Topi is an up and comer and a left hand specialist. This powerhouse deputy sheriff has control here. And Christian Vinny hovering above the pad. It's a foul. It will be a win for Topi. Impressive stuff. Like Chandler, when the sun's out, the guns are out. They were intact there, and we look back here at the final moments. Robbie Torpy put all that power down on Christian Vinny. The man's arms are like cow's back legs. Christian Vinny making his way off, and Tofi wins that pull. But Christian Vinny, as he came off there, did not look real good, and he's going to go back and have a seat. It went well. It's painful. Gotta get some refreshments. A nice win for Topi, but all eyes are on the beast on the left side, Travis Bajant. I think that um, the regional had a little bit of a wake-up call with being a little... Christian Binney has head. had such a difficult route through this tournament, but if ever there's been a warrior, it is that man. And Christian Binney, once again, showing that he may be damaged, but he is not defeated. A warrior to the last. Makes his way off. Slowly. Now we continue on with Wilton Brock, Ryan Espy. Wilton Brock is a real sleeper on the left arm, and he shot Espy there. Moves to the side. A big, big win for Wilton Brock. Look at that again. I think that Ryan Espy wasn't happy with that ball, but it was a parallel pin. Espy defeated by the better man today. Brock on fire. Christian Vinny really struggling after his exertions today. He has battled so very hard. Well, the paramedics checking him out. If we have more details, we'll let you know. But we continue on now. Eric Waffel and oh. Brendan Hall. Eric Waffel so powerful in the top row. Brendan Hall, relative newcomer. And just not enough experience there to put the brakes on this top roller. The Californian, Eric Waffel, there just driving through the hand and wrist. And he is progressing well here in Vegas. Great look at the hands there of Brock and Latimer. It'll be Latimer on the right taking on Wilton Brock. Wilton Brock is having the day of his life here in Las Vegas. This would be incredible if he could put the brakes on Sean Latimer. Go, go, Latimer go. started as one of the favorites, but Wilton Brock has rolled it into a hole. Latimer is in a terrible position. Oh, it's Brock with the win. Huge upset. Wilton Brock takes out Sean Latimer. That is a fantastic victory for Wilton Brock. And this young man is in incredible form right when he needs to be. Jeff Dave. Look at the physical statistics of Dave. But he faces the favorite, the supremely efficient Travis Bajan with another win. And he will tell the world all about it. Look at the speed off the start. Jeff Dave has got incredible tools for the sport of arm wrestling. But they were taken away by hey, Travis Bajan. Get, get this dude in the finals, baby! Yeah. Love the confidence for Bajan. He's not quite there yet. He's getting closer. He will take on Deputy Sheriff Robbie Topi in one semi. On the other side, Wilton Brock and Eric Wolfel. Here is Christian Binney now. Lead he is, however, possibly the strongest individual in a game which is ultimately about strength. Jerry Cataret is a difficult puzzle to solve. But Dave Chafee, interestingly, may just have too much power. We know Jerry's just had a war there. Dave earlier today, but look at that from Dave Chafee. That 
That's his astronomical power. And he seems to do it with very little effort. Just rolls to the side and Jerry Cataret just completely unable to find his position. This is a man with multiple world championship titles and yet he cannot find any weakness at all in Dave Chafee. Chafee just powers through his opponent. Incredible strength. Dave Chafee is an awesome specimen. Easy money for a reason. Look at that roll. So much raw horsepower. For those people out there who say that arm wrestling's about technique, not for this man it isn't. All about that diesel horsepower for Dave Easy Money Chafee. He's on to the final. We get ready now for the other super heavyweight semi-final on the right side. The legacy as robust as that left by the man he is about to face in this final. John Brzezink, universally regarded as the greatest arm wrestler of all time. Right now, I'm like a pressure cooker, and I've just been building up the pressure, building up, building up, and, and I'm ready to explode, you know. And once I get up on that stage, it's all, it's all coming out like, ah, you know. Devin is very dangerous if you let him get in the match at all. He's got incredible endurance. Uh, so the key for me is to be very um, observant and very alert before the go and try to get a, a good enough position where I can be very explosive on him. If he gets position on me and I can't finish him quick, I, I'm through. As we look at the road to the semis, you see Brzezink already defeated Devin Larry, but both these men, Neil, are in great shape and should both be fresh. Yeah, nip and tuck at this stage in terms of who would have more miles on the clock as we come into this final, but very uh, similar in one respect. Both men are good at everything. Always jostling for position. Best two out of three. Here we go. The route to victory here for Brzezink is speed. He will want to finish quickly. Devin Larratt trains on the counter. Ah, a bail there. Ah. You were just about to go. Right oh, now. yeah, right. You have one foul. I was going to lift your body and flip you over with my head here in a second. Devin Larratt is looking for the strap. He receives a foul for his troubles, but that's exactly strategically what he wanted to achieve. The strap will anchor, lower down his arm and allow him to put the brakes on John Brzezink more easily. Brzezink will be looking to finish quickly. His hand and wrist strength are superior. And he goes for the early top roll. But Devon Warrant has put the brakes on him now. He will start to constrict and squeeze his opponent to the center of the table. Feels his endurance is better. As does John Brzezink. Brzezink will be trying to calculate a way through here and keep rising, applying pressure up into the hand and wrist of Devon Larratt. But Larratt is in a fabulous position. Moves to the back of the pad and he will make Brzezink work here. Even if Larratt can finish, he won't do so. He'll just wait it out and try to burn Brzezink in a fantastic position. And now he presses up. Trying to apply pressure into the hand and wrist of John Brzezink. Devon Larratt knows he's in control and Brzezink concedes. What do you know? What do you know? Uh -oh. <laughs> you like that? One more. Devon Larratt's strategy executed to perfection there, but the experience of John Brzezink, as soon as he felt his hand and wrist compromised, he let go. He knows that he needs to win quickly and will change his angle, change his style. This is a dangerous moment for Larratt. He must get to the scratch. John Brazil will look to top roll the side. John Brazil's hand and wrist are iron. No opportunity to slip there. Look how John Brazil learned, was educated from his first experience with Larratt and didn't allow the connection. Gio will try to capitalize, controls the hand! It's Brzezink with the win! The perfect storm with the win! Frustration for Devon Larratt, but John Brzezink once again underlines his credential, improving a legacy which has no equal.
We monitored Brzezink and Larratt during this match. Some interesting numbers, including Devin's peak heart rate of 228 and his peak G-force of 1.17, equivalent to a Bugatti going from 0 to 60 in 2.4 seconds. Congratulations, John. People say you are the world's greatest arm wrestler. How much pressure do you feel coming into a match against Devin when you hear that? It was tough to prove it right there and there. Um, mental note for me and everybody else in this room, do not hook Devin Lorette. Holy cow. What was so tough about that match? You, oh, you almost conceded in that first round. I, I felt so confident that even if he got me hooked, I thought I would be able to roll him, but he dug it in that first match good and deep. And whew, Yeah, I should have gave up earlier because he's got tremendous endurance. I knew I wasn't going to be able to pull him back through it, but thank goodness I still have a top roll. Well, take a few deep breaths. Rest up. We'll see you in the next match. John Brzezink impressively on. Carries into this matchup. Zina is an animal. He's taken out some of the guys regarded as the very best in the world. He sets his sights on Chris Chandler. Here's the road to the semifinals for Nick Zina and Chris Chandler. Neil, fair to say, sun's out. Chandler's guns are out as well. Oh, unbelievable physique on Chris Chandler. This man has the body fat of a tooth. He's focused so much energy into being as strong as possible. But the explosivity of Nick Zinner is a major weapon coming into this final. Oh, look at that! Nick Zinner wastes no time in blasting the first match to the pad. Look at that start, an incredible sweep to the side. Just uses that explosivity to blast through opponents and for all Chris Chandler's power, he was unable to get any purchase in the match. Chandler trying to improve his hand and wrist position, but has he got the opportunity to gain any kind of spot in here before he's run over? What at that? And Nick Zena is laying waste to opponents here as he sets his sights on the final. And you'd have to say that the farm boy has taken very, very little damage as he drives through his opponents here, leaving himself in a fantastic situation going into the final against the depleted Chafee. Less than a second taken in both instances to literally drive through. Chris Chandler. Powerful, full of emotion. Sharing it with the kids on hand here watching the event in Las Vegas. A big win for him. Ina has had a cleaner route to the final and we've talked today already about the explosivity. But the confidence of Dave Chafee, having previously defeated Nick Zena, could be important here. Heavy, heavy, we need this to fall for Zena to the bay. Somebody's going to get the $20,000 that will be placed in the middle of the table right there. The wall hammer on the line. Of course, two out of three here in this final. It's a victory from Nick Zena. was really getting away early and finding a position from which he can win. He does not want this match to stop. Dave Chafee has so much horsepower. That's a great start from Zena. He uh, slips and gets to the straps, but of key importance there. Look as the match slips apart. Nick Zena's hand is actually over the top of Dave Chafee. The index finger over the index finger knuckle of Chafee. Hand control achieved. The strap favors the power man. Surely that is Dave Chafee. Big drive from Zena, and the brakes are on. And Dave Chafee. Now we'll start to apply that incredible horsepower. 
And there's the win for the reigning Good champion. Man. Frustration evident on the face of Nick Zinner there. He started so well without the strap, but the strap ties Chiffy to his opponent. And from there, it's so hard to get around this man's power. So one win for Dave Chafee, of course, two to win the match. 20,000 on the line, the wall hammer here in the super heavyweight right-hand final. Now a lower grip assumed by Nick Zinner here, and that could be a very bad decision. He's looking for the hook, but he looks unsettled and a little less confident than we saw. Oh! Dave Chafee with a top row! Dave Chafee, for the first time, looked for technique there. He actually rolled out of the hand of Nick Zinner. Who would have expected that? Impressive. We take a look now at the numbers provided by River City's technology. Chafee's heart rate cracked 200 during that match, but you'll notice Zinner's G-force was higher. That's because he was fighting back against the man with the power, the hammer, and the 20 grand, Neil. For the first time, Dave Chafee forced with a victory over Bath. That's so powerful, but he knows now from his earlier match with Marcio that the Brazilian is in explosive form and will try to drive sideways. Ron must stop this and make it a dogfight. One elbow foul, Barbosa. The one foul on Marcio, three fouls, you lose the pole. We're in the best two out of three here in the semi. Marcio accelerating hard, and the elbow just popping up in the air, largely because of Ron Bath's back Close pressure. Your Close your thumbs. Okay. Back it up. Okay. Close your hands. Go! And away we go, and a great start from Ron Bath. Initiates hard, and this is exactly what Bath required. He stopped that explosive hit of Barbosa, and from here he can go to work. Very few men more powerful than Ron Bath, and he's in a fantastic position at the back of the pack. Marcio Barbosa trying to gain some position back and does so, moves to centre. Big attack there. Barbosa on the tricep, and this is looking good for the Brazilian. Big drive to the pad, but an infringement there. The elbow call. Just see it on the phone. So the second foul on Barbosa, we'll see it now, Neil. There's the lift, and as he tries to put the brakes on, look at the front of the pad there. Just as he took the pin, Marcio Barbosa extending beyond the perimeter of the pad. Right here, straight, straight Gotta be careful up, now. Close. Already on two fouls. Can not afford to do so again, but the start is better from the Brazilian. This is much better position for Marcio. Needs to watch that elbow. Popping up in the air momentarily there, and he has no margin for error. Ron Bath in all kinds of trouble. Squeezes back into that hook as Marcio tries to reverse and break open his wrist. Fantastic wall there. Marcio's elbow all over the place. And Your third foul occurred. Oh, it is given Marcio Barbosa cruel way to lose the first round. But it's not over yet. Our balls are just a little bit aggressive there, chasing the win quickly, and in doing so, his elbow again there just popped right up in the air. He gained an advantage there. And Ron Bath, with the win on fouls, he'll take that all day. one nothing lead for Ron Bath. Barbosa, of course, couldn't go with the left arm, but he's giving it a go here with the right. John Brzezink will be watching from the sidelines here with a huge smile on his face because this is going exactly how he would have wanted. These men are absolutely beating each other up. We are deep, deep inside, and Martial Barbosa there has cut hard onto the bicep. He suffered a serious injury on that left arm, but you can see there is no time to rest or be concerned about that as Rumba powers to the side again. Barbosa in a great position, resting on that tricep. Now he'll try to move around and get his shoulder behind the arm. Ron Bath is limited in what he can do from here. He's run out of pad, and he seems to be running out of power. Oh, there's the win. It's Marcio Barbosa. Levels the score in an absolute screaming, career-ending death war. Look at that from Barbosa. Sweating heavily, so much energy expended. Here we go. 
This is the decider, the money round. Neither man will have much left in the tank, but they've burned at a similar rate. And Martial wants the pressure. Huge drive from the Brazilian. Squeezes to the side. Ron Bach is in defensive mode early. He's selling it at this stage, and Barbosa's on the tricep. Fantastic spot for the Brazilian, and he will wait. On the breath of Bath, he will attack, did so there. Ron Bath equal to it on this occasion, but he needs to move. Bath again tries to advance his position, but Marcio Barbosa has claimed the victory again. So quite a battle between these two greats in the sport. We look back at the final moments from the pole. Marcio Barbosa was very clever in the way he approached that last start he got into a resting spot early and that was the difference incredible victory for Barbosa but how much has he left to face John Brazink in tonight's final well Barbosa finds redemption on the right side with his family close by he finds his way to another final trouble is arguably the greatest arm wrestler in the world is waiting on this is Nick Zinna and Chris Chandler Nick Zinna comes to the final right in a wave of confidence after he blew through the regionals with the biggest upset. There he took out Travis Pageant. Here he explodes through Chris Chandler early. The freak, no opportunity to put the brakes on there. Look at that start and look at the emotion, the aggression on the giant farm boy. Full of emotion, very strong man. The man you referred to a moment ago as a 400-pound polar bear is up next. There is Sean Latimer. Just like a big threat on Latimer's weaker arm, and he's hooked him early. It's Josh with the win, and an impressive one. Look at that, Riker cutting in arm on arm. Sean not as comfortable on that right arm. And a powerful move there from Riker. And a big victory to move on. We continue on. This is Matt Gerdner and Chris Chandler. We pick this up mid-match with a foul on Gerdner. And we are deep inside and an enormous attack by the freak. Chris Chandler in the gray shirt driving for the bat. But Matt Gerdner is holding at the base. The bicep strength of Gerdner is so impressive there. But he's going to need to get himself back in this match while he still has the opportunity. And he has the fight back. Gerdner needs to watch the elbow. Lifted a bobble in there. I think that's going to get called. And it does. But Wood with the uh, signal early. It's, it's when you're driving this way, bud. It's coming right up. Disappointment there. As he uh, tried to power back to the center. No intention, just couldn't base the elbow. And you can see hovered above the pad two or three times there. Hence the foul. There you go, right can he do it again? So two fouls on Gerdner. One more, he would lose the pull. Would indeed, and he needs to anchor that elbow down now. Worrying Lee doesn't have the base on there. And he's really riding his luck as he drives to the side. Chandler, the freak, that massive muscular arm trying to hold up Gerdner. Oh, Gerdner's elbow again. Miles off the back. Dude, it's this high up. It's this high up, man. Matt Gurdner contesting that, but he really has no grounds to do so. I love Matt. This guy's a great competitor, but his elbow was wayward there. Miles off the back of the pad. Disappointment for Gurdner. So the victory goes to Chandler. How about this matchup on the right side? Bajan on the left, his wife Casey looking on against Dave Chafee. This is an incredible potential matchup. Travis Bajan has made vast improvements on this right arm and he feels that he can do something here. Oh, I'm gonna tell you yeah. right here. Travis Bajan there, given a foul, I believe, for a jump start, but wow, that was close. A harsh decision from Charles Fisk, but no consequence for Bajan. He felt what he needed to feel there, and he will be looking for the same suit warmed over to try and get to the strap, but again, he puts Wow, the beast.